Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So for the next month of my, well, no, that's not right. We go every two weeks. So for my next four teachings, roughly, we're going to be talking about faith. And we're still in this book of you've already got it. So as the Lord leads and I, and I stick with the book, just as reminders, he's already done everything. He's done his part. He's not doing more or less for you than he is anybody else. He's, because he said it, because Jesus said it, it's finished. God's done his part. So even in this area of faith, God's done his part. You don't need more faith, so tr quit trying to get it. If you're, born, if you're born again, you've already been given all the faith you will ever need. Right now, you have more, faith, you have more than enough faith. You're just ignorant of what you've got and how to use it. I'm going to read here in Luke 17, verses 3 through 5. I've got it in a couple of different versions. King James Version, Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he for repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. So here's a little quick... Well, I shouldn't use that word. Here's a little... Uh, I'm going to try my best just to stick with the lessons, and I'm not going to jump to the next lesson. If we're only here 10 minutes, which you know that ain't going to happen, uh, then we're here 10 minutes. But I just I want to stick with the book and, and, and just go lesson by lesson. Um, but this is just kind of funny. All of the miracles, all of the healings, everything that the apostles saw, witnessed in person, this is when they asked the thought, they, they asked Jesus to increase their faith. <laughs> when they had to deal with other people and the way they were treated. Just kind of interesting. It wasn't the miracles, you know, there was even a, there's the, and I, I didn't write this down, it's just the thought came to me. You know, they, they, Jesus sent them out and they came back and they said, even the, the, the devils are subject to us in your name. They didn't say anything about increasing asking for anything. They were just using the name and the name above all names, and the demons had to listen. But when Jesus said, if your brother comes, does something against you, and he repents, even if it's seven times in a day, forgive. And they're like, increase our faith for that. <laughs> but then it goes on, and here I'm going to read this in um, the New Living Translation. Be alert. If you see your friend going wrong, correct him. If he responds, forgive him. Even if it's personal against you and repeated seven times through the day, and seven times he says, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, I won't do it again, forgive him. The apostles came up to the master. The apostles came up and said to the master, give us more faith. It's just kind of interesting that that's when they asked for it. And it's because faith is for everyday life. It's not just big things. It's not just healings and miracles. It's for everything, every day. Live by faith. Faith certainly applies to your crisis, but you need faith for the people you live with, work with, day in and day out, all week long. It takes faith to always unconditionally love and forgive your coworkers, your spouse, your children, your parents, and your neighbors. So, the, But this is what Jesus answered to them here in Luke 17, 6. And if he had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. In the uh, New Living Translation that says, But the Master said, You don't need more faith. There is, more, there is no more or less in faith. If you have a bare kernel of faith, say the size of a poppy seed, 
You could say to this sycamore tree, go jump in the lake, and it would do it. I know there are the scriptures. This, I'm going to be very honest, for the past few months, I knew I was going here. <laughs> I've been listening to this and putting it in. I took a break and listened to some other things, and then I knew this was coming up, so I've been putting it back in again. And this entire time, I am not coming against anything Sam has taught. I even had the thoughts, and that's my fault for not doing it, uh, of pulling him aside and saying, I'm learning this. Um, you know, am I wrong? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the pastor. I get that. It doesn't mean I don't miss things. And this is going to come up again because I, I, know, the, I know the teaching that's coming, that's coming out of all this. <clears throat> what we have to recognize, what we have to realize is Jesus walked under the old covenant. The new covenant wasn't in play until he fulfilled the law. When he made the comments he made, he was making comments underneath the old covenant. So in the old covenant, it was a person's faith that their faith towards God allowed God to be able to work for them. Once Jesus fulfilled what he fulfilled, that gift is a free gift. It's inside of you now. The same way you're healed and you're blessed, you have faith. That's the new covenant. The new covenant, thank God we're in the new covenant. I don't want to be in another time frame. I love history stories. I love history movies. I love hearing things of this. And, and all. I thank God I'm in the here and now. This is where I'm supposed to be. That's why I'm here. It's that simple. I'm not going to whatever. I'm happy now. God did what he did and he did it for all. And he took care of you. You're covered. It's under the curse. If, it, if it's under the curse, it has nothing to do with you. There, there, there are, there are, yes, there is work involved. I've always said that. I can never go against that because that's Bible. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that there's stress involved. It doesn't mean that there's confusion involved. It doesn't mean that there's going to be anything that would be under the curse. So that's why you go back and you learn and you study and you recognize, oh, whoa, whoa. Is that God or is that not God? In this instance, in what we're talking about, you have faith already. Now, whether you believe it or not, and we'll get to that too, and I have actually talked about that already this past, in the past year, you know, because you could have unbelief <laughs> and still have faith, but you have it because it's inside of your spirit, man. <clears throat> you already possess the same amount and quality of faith Jesus had when he physically walked on the earth, it's inside every born-again believer. So now here in verses uh, 7 through 10, Jesus immediately launched into a parable to illustrate his meaning. I, mean, I got it in two different versions here again. But which of you, having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when, it has come from the when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet, and will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I, I, I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. See, I, I don't think I've ever made that statement before in my life. <laughs> but it's old English for I don't think so. Uh, that I've said. <laughs> or that's not how it works. Said that too. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all these, those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servant. We have done that which was our duty to do. Okay, let's do New Living Translation. <laughs> Suppose one of you has a servant who comes in from plowing the field or tending the sheep. Would you take his coat, set the table, and say, sit down and eat? Wouldn't you be more likely to say, prepare dinner, change your clothes, and wait table for me until I've finished my coffee, then go to the kitchen and have your supper? Does the servant give, get special thanks for doing what's expected of him? It's the same to you. When you've done everything expected of you, expected of you, 
be matter of fact and say, the work is done. What we were told to do, we did. Faith is a servant. He, get, he, he, he uses other language and he uses other wording and he describes it in other ways. He, well, you know what? I'm just going to read this line. <laughs> in today's touchy-filly, political correct mindset, most people would say, well, you shouldn't treat a servant that way. But in the time that Jesus spoke this parable, servants and slaves were pampered, weren't, I'm sorry, weren't pampered, they were used. You didn't just allow them to lie around and do nothing all day because you didn't want to impose on them. Neither were you kind and gentle with them. You commanded them to take care of your needs before they took care of their own. You didn't have to be mean and nasty about it, but as their master, you definitely gave them orders. If you had a slave, you put them to work. It's that simple. You have faith. Put it to work. It's already inside of you. It's a gift of the Spirit. <laughs> Where's that at? I've already wrote that down here towards the end of my notes. My silly iPad sat down, typed my notes up. And I, it's nice because I'm able to do this on the, you know, I, I'm able to sit at my computer and, and type in all my notes. And then I could go over to the iPad and tell it to download. A little booger wouldn't download. Thing ran, I just let it plug. It's, it's still sitting at home, probably plugged up, trying to download. I was like, ah, oh. so I had to print out my notes. <laughs> Galatians 5, 22, 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Faith is there. You have it already. God took care of it. This way we can't boast and we can't brag and it was all me. It was all him. He's already taken care of us. He literally put it in, called it a fruit, <laughs> and gave it to us. Jesus was saying, you need to use the faith you've already got. Even if it's only as big as a mustard seed, it's enough to cast a tree into the sea. You would put your servant to work if you owned one, wouldn't you? You already have faith. Now put it to work. Most believers are ignorant of the faith they already have. He tells the story of how even in the beginning of his ministry, he was, uh, Brother Andrew talks about how he was um, saved as a very young child. Like I think he says eight years old. Um. And I don't remember that he was saved under a denomination or whatnot. But um, he just talks about how once he got in and actually started studying the word for himself, for himself, you know, the, the, in, in the same vein as what Sam said, you know, you, you open up the Bible and you, par, you partake and you're supposed to partake daily. <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not being nourished by the thought. You partake. I had noodles too yesterday, so... They haven't had a potato in a while, but I, I was nourished by the noodles, <laughs> you know, but guess what? I got to eat something again today, which I have. We had some really good uh, sourdough uh, waffles. That was breakfast with some maple syrup. <laughs> I made Sam do a taste test the other day. Uh, we buy the certain maple syrup. I buy it online and ship to the house. And then I was just really, I don't know. I was just, I had a thought. And when I'm sitting at my computer and I had a thought, I looked up, I did a uh, search for like best maple syrup. <laughs> and then I was able to buy it on Amazon and had to ship to the house. So I've got like three different flavors of maple syrup at the house. It's like, you got a minute? So he did a taste test. I'm going to enjoy my time while I'm here. <laughs> and I'm going to enjoy myself going through this. Not that this is bad because, you know, I'm having a good time. I work my job. I get to be the pastor of the church. I get to be the father of four. I get to be the brother of four. <laughs> four plus, you know, four plus one, I guess. I get to be the son of, of two parents. I got to bless my father-in-law the other week. He needed help with something. And I was just like, I'm your son. I'll help you. 
So their mom and dad, their mom and dad. I mean, I just, I'm enjoying myself. He has stuff for us to do, absolutely. But he's equipped us to do anything and everything, including our heart's desires. He loves you that much. He wants you to have your heart's desires. He's not holding anything back. And that's every, that's, I mean, that's a very quick synopsis of all the teaching over the past year. I mean, we've literally been going through this book for probably a year now, off and on. But that's, he's done it. He's taken care of us. But it's just recognizing what his word says. I know this ain't the Bible, but <laughs> I got this, I got, I got them printed out. Recognizing what the word says, taking the time to study, standing on that and not declaring faith speaks, by the way. That's not why I put it up in the little uh, rotation of, uh, of our, what is that presentation? Our little before service presentation. That just, that was something that I got from uh, uh, Brother Jerry. And, but faith speaks. What are you saying with your words on a constant basis? Out of the abundance of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's on the inside? What's coming out? You have to make sure what you're declaring is what you want because it's going to be what you get. What you're saying is what you get. Faith is a servant. Use it like a servant. Stand on the word, yes. Speak what God is telling you to speak. Yes. Realize because he's a good God, he's got you covered. He's taking care of you. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. I mean, it just I don't. You can't get any clearer than that. And that was even King James version. And you know, I don't like reading King James version all that often. So here we go, New Living. Now this is seven through ten in Ephesians two. Now God has us where He wants us, with all the time in this world, and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. Saving is all His idea and all His work. All we do is trust Him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done the whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does and the good work he has gotten ready for us to do work we had better be doing. God, he's going to let everybody make the choice. We know that. That has been my quote of a lifetime. It's your choice. But he's done it. He's taken care of us. He set us up to succeed. He's bought and Jesus with his life paid the way. We can have our heart's desires, and we get to enjoy the ride as we go. And you do go through, because that's Bible too. You know, I just said this the other week. The Bible says, you know, oh, Lord, what was it? It was there. Wep no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's Bible, right? We can agree on that's Bible. Don't ask me where it's at at the moment, because I don't know. Have to ask Sonny after church. <laughs> Or, or ask Google on your phone. But no weapon formed against you shall prosper. There will be weapons formed. They will not prosper. That's also what that's saying. It doesn't say there will never be a weapon formed. No weapon formed will prosper. There is a devil. He wants to take us out. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy the thing is, he has to do it in that order because he can't kill you without your permission. But if he steals the word, now there's the start. God's word carries faith. Here in Romans 10, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, I probably didn't say that name right. Uh, Lord, who hath believed our report, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. <clears throat> Again, Romans 10, 14 through 17, New Living Translation. But how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? And how can they hear if nobody tells them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? That's why the scripture exclaims, exclaims, is that the right word? Exclaims? That sounds weird. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess I don't use that one that often either. A sight to take your breath away. Grand process, process, processions of people telling all the good things of God. But not everybody is ready for this, ready to see and hear and act. Isaiah asked what we all asked at one time or another. Does anyone care, God? Is anyone listening and believing a word of it? The point is, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. You, in your studies in your communication with the Lord, in your prayer time, whatever you want to call it, in your quiet time, in your, our time here as a family, putting the word in, putting the word in, putting the word in, because God's word puts faith in you. That faith is what you stood on when you got saved. Because it is too good to be true. Because there are people who have done way worse things. There are, there are people who have done things that I've never even thought about. God did it for them too. It's not big sin, little sin. There is sin nature, which is a, makes you have a dead spirit. And Jesus came and died and rose again so I can be saved. And when that message is preached, that puts that faith of God inside of that person. That's God's faith because those are God's words. And that puts that faith in them to be, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I need Jesus. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to heaven. I'm not going to heaven because of this and because of that. You're not going to heaven because you're not accepting the free gift. That's the truth in the matter. That's the conversations that we have to have. And those are, the, those are the Bible words that we need to make sure we're declaring in the midst of these conversations is you need Jesus. You need what he's done for you. The price has already been paid. All you've got to do is accept it. And even having that conversation, you are putting, you are putting that faith in that person. Now, whether they receive or not, whether they make the decision or not, you've planted a seed. You got to make sure you're ready to have these conversations, and you got to make sure that you're declaring the word of God in the midst of these conversations, because you are literally putting faith in people by declaring the word of God, because that's what it does. The word of God puts faith in you. Again, He's set it up. He's done it all for us, so He's even putting His faith in you as you put your, His words in you, and when you put those words into somebody else. You're putting God's faith into them. He's has, he has set it all up. It is so much easier than what, unfortunately, mankind has set up. Well, I'm of this faith, and I'm of that faith, and I'm... No, 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 no. You're of that denomination who wants to look at this part of the Bible <laughs> and say, this is what we do. And you're of this denomination who says, well, we don't like this and this, so we took that out and we called ourselves this. <laughs> People have a choice. I don't want that. I want what the Bible says. I want the entire Bible in its fullness revealed to me, which takes time. It is a process, and that's okay. He's already set it up. 
He's already paid the way. He's already, he wants us to succeed. He wants us to go from glory to glory to glory. And that is getting a revelation of every part of the Bible, not just sticking to this part, whatever that is for that denomination. Get the fullness of the gospel. Get, get every little thing that he has to offer because my arms don't go that wide. He's that big. You simply cannot believe unless you hear the word of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. God's words carry faith. Words contain either faith or unbelief. God's words are full of faith. God himself is faithful and the words he has spoken are faith filled. They are containers full of God's own faith. You can't believe God for salvation without first having God's word bring you his faith. It truly takes a supernatural faith in order to be born again. Therefore, we do not have God's supernatural <clears throat> excuse me, therefore we do have God's supernatural faith in us and it doesn't come and go. The gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Romans 11:29. We just aren't using what we have primarily because we don't know we have it. <clears throat> For some reason, I put down Colossians 1, <laughs> 27 and 28. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. It's all in Christ Jesus. I am blessed in Christ Jesus. And Christ is, you know, Christ is the, the anointed one in his anointing. You know, that's the definition of Christ. So in Jesus, the anointed one in his anointing, which... I've accepted, I've, I've partaken of it, and I did this years ago. Yes, I've messed up over the years. Yes, I have needed grace and mercy multiple times. Yes, I've ignored what he's told me to do, and, 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 and I messed up and had to repent, and, 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 but he has done his part. In him, I should be living and moving, right? In him, I should be doing Whatever it is, your nine to five job. <laughs> Lauren's like, I wish it was only nine to five because Lynette would say the same thing. <clears throat> Mine's six to 2.30. <laughs> so I put in less than nine to five. Mine's six to 2.30. Whatever it is, he wants us to enjoy that. He wants us to be blessed in that. And he wants us to be this ambassador that we're all called to be putting out his words when we, in the midst of conversation, declaring his words over situations, standing on and in the faith that he's already put inside of us. It's a new and better covenant. It's not the old covenant. It's, it's, it's not, yes, absolutely. God hasn't changed. Absolutely true. But God, he had to have animal sacrifices back then. And that only covered sin. Because even at that, you know, animals aren't perfect. <laughs> Jesus is perfect. He became that sacrifice once and for all. It paid the price in full for everybody before him who was looking towards his sacrifice. And since then, everybody looking back to the sacrifice, we are healed. We are whole. We are blessed. You've got the fruit of the Spirit inside of you. You've got the gifts of the Spirit inside of you. Develop them. Walk in them. Allow God to work with you. There are, again, this is just a repeat of it. I'll just, and I'm probably just continue to repeat this as long as we're all together. There are people that you have to reach that nobody else can. And it's not that God's, God has given everybody a choice. God has given everybody an opportunity. But this, this, 
If other, if other people would have obeyed God, I would be doing something totally different right now. And that is perfectly fine with me. I just want to do what he wants me to do. Because he had a plan. He had things lined up, set up for people to be in positions that they should have been in. And people make choices. And it's okay. God still loves them. And he'll, 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 he'll reach them where they're at. So he needed somebody. He needed somebody. All right, Lord, what do you want? That's, that's my attitude. That's my attitude at work. <laughs> it's like, you know, I can't, I, I work with some very smart men who see things and can create really cool things. And I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. I'm not there yet. I haven't been fully trained. I'm still learning and I'm still growing and I'm still taking in knowledge and, and applying that knowledge. You know, but I'm willing all right, what do you need me to do? What do you want me to do? I had to go back and do my old job a little bit. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. I'm getting, this is what I need. I got to pick my kids up. <laughs> I got to get my kids after school. So I've got to be leaving by this time. You know what I mean? So that's the conversation. That's the communication I have with my job. I need this. I got to be able, I got to leave. I got to get my kids. Okay. From here to here, I'm yours. What do you want me to do? I don't care. And it's just, that's, you know, not everybody's like that. More people, some, now I'm set in my ways and areas. I'm not, and the Lord's still working on me. Absolutely true. You know, but that's, that's how I am. I want to, that's how I want to be. That's my desire. Lord, what do you want? What do you want for this church? What do you want for this part of the family? What gifts need to be brought in so we can all come up to the next level? I, it, I, it was, uh, I, I love the factor of Brother Lonnie was able to come in and, and give us a word. It was, it was wonderful. I'm not the only gift in this body. I am definitely not a pulpit hog. I'll get up here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday if that's what the Lord says, and that's fine because it's whatever He wants. But there are other gifts, other gifts that need to practice. Step up. <laughs> You've got the same God inside of you that I've got. And, it's, uh, and, and I know what, you know, there, no, okay. Not everybody's going to come up behind here. That is absolutely true. I understand that. And, I, and I'm not forcing that upon any of you. So get that thought out of your mind. <laughs> but you have the same God inside of you. You have the same access to the Word, to, to, to use the gifts of the Spirit and, and, and to display the fruits of the Spirit. And, and you could do that to whatever extent you want to do that. Because He is no respecter of persons. Bible, right? It's in there. And it's 100% true. He's done it for everybody. And because we are in this new and better covenant, they're, they're, He's not holding back. He's not holding back. And, you know, the reason that the Jesus was able to say, I haven't seen such great a faith, is because that man put his human faith, because, and we'll get into this again, there is a human faith. You came in and sat on these chairs. <laughs> that was human faith. You get in your car and you drive to a four-way stop and it's your turn to go through. You're putting faith in the other three people that nobody's going to gun it. That's human faith. To be saved takes supernatural faith. And then God loves us so much, He just deposits that in us when we hear those words, you need Jesus to get to heaven. Jesus died so you don't have to suffer. Jesus bore stripes so you can be healed. Those are faith words going out and implanting faith in you. Now, whether you choose to believe or if you choose to walk in unbelief, that's where we're all at where we're at. He loves us no less, and He will continue to work. You may say the same thing to a person for the next 10 years, <laughs> but it may be in that 10th year where it finally clicks 
and I'm, I keep spitting. My mouth is dry or something. I keep seeing it fly out. I didn't. I didn't. I don't think I'm one of those preachers, <laughs> spit flying preachers, but it's doing it today. God has set us up. We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. Find it in His Word. Recognize that. Oh wow, He did that for me. Well, I'm going to stand in that. That's where I'm going to walk from. That place of victory. I'm going to walk in that place of victory. I, it's already done. It's not something that I'm working up. But it gets to be something that we get to walk out with Him. I've probably brought things up that are going to come up again. That's absolutely true. But we're going to, these next lessons going forward from here, um, we're going to teach about the laws of faith. We're going to teach about supernatural and human faith. And then we're going to teach again on faith speaks. Like I, I knew I could have got like a couple lessons and all this put together, but it's just, that's not, we're just going to take our time. We're, li we're literally just going to take our time. I'm going to repeat myself like I always do. <laughs> but as long as it's the word, it's okay. <laughs> He's done it for us. And that includes faith. It's already in your spirit, man. It's a gift. of the, It's a fruit of the spirit. So it's in there. It's in there. Was it a Prego commercial? <laughs> it's in there. He put it in you. It's in there. It's been bought and paid for. You're taken care of. But you need to believe. Did that make sense this morning? Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Does anybody need prayer? I want prayer for anything. Thanks for joining us for this message. We hope you got something awesome out of it. There's certainly no obligation, but if you would like to give and be a part of supporting what this ministry is doing, you can head to fcftrenton.org and find that information. Until next time, we love you, Jesus loves you, and we'll see you again really soon.